Kubernetes is an open source orchestration tool for deploying, maintaining, and scaling up a containerized application. Almost every cloud provider is running a managed Kubernetes service in cloud, be it Amazon AWS's Enterprise Elastic Kubernetes service, or from Microsoft Azure Kubernetes services, or Google Kubernetes engine, or from Oracle, Oracle Kubernetes engine. The architecture of Kubernetes includes a master node and one or more worker node. The master node processes include API server, controller manager server, scheduler, etcd, and then worker node includes things like pods or agents like kubelet, C advisor, or kube proxy. What are these different components? What are role of each of these and how they talk to each other? I'm going to cover all this in today's episode. Welcome to part three of five part video series on Docker and Kubernetes with me Atul Kumar from team Ketone Academy where we help you in your journey to cloud and managing cloud native applications including Docker and Kubernetes. So as discussed in part one of this five part video series, we have a training on Docker and Kubernetes including certification where we cover both Docker and so Kubernetes in detail right from complete beginner to making you a certified Docker and Kubernetes administrator. So as a part of this training, we run a lot of free sessions. And if you have not yet attended one of our highly engaged free masterclass, then towards end of this episode, I'm going to tell you how you can join these free approximately 90 minute sessions. So one of these free trainings, I picked a training from our Microsoft certified trainer and Kubernetes expert Mamata and created the five part video series. So if you missed the previous part where I covered the Docker architecture and components, then you can check it out at ketoneacademy.com forward slash Docker 13. So back to this episode, Mamta will cover what is Kubernetes, why and when we need this Kubernetes. So things like connecting the containers running on multiple hosts for inter-host communication of containers or deploying and updating software at scale. She will then discuss about Kubernetes architecture covering both master and worker node and various components that make these master and worker node. She will then move on to the pods uh, which are nothing but collection of one or more containers. So Kubernetes can manage these different containers via pod. And then finally, she will wrap up this episode by covering services in Kubernetes that provides static IP address so that external applications can talk to applications running on Kubernetes pods. So let's see what she has to say about Kubernetes and its architecture. So here we covered the Docker part and we understood that containers are providing a lot of advantage, but I mentioned there are a lot of disadvantages as well, right? IP address is not fixed. The storage is not persistent. You are able to mount the storage, no doubt in it. But till the time we are talking about Docker, I never mentioned that inter containers or inter host communication was possible. Like this, talking across host is not possible with plain Docker. And why is that? Because it doesn't have the capability of doing bridge to bridge networking. To uh, do a bridge to bridge networking, we need something like a gateway bridge. And that is when the tools like Kubernetes and all come into picture. Kubernetes helps us manage the complete life cycle. If I have five containers, 10 containers, it is much more easier to manage on a single host, but on a production, I will never leave with a single machine, right? I would be having a lot of machines altogether. And if containers are running in all the machines, there are a thousand containers, someone has to manage that. And this is the management layer. And if you see, Containers are existing in the market from the time Linux is there. Google has been one of the big time users of it, and they have been using from the product first product they came in the market. And they, when they saw Docker has come up with such an easy solution in the market, they donated the Kubernetes, which was the Borg project inside uh, Google. They donated it to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So Kubernetes has originated from Google and they don't maintain that now but yes that is a technology which is behind all the google services which is being provided so when we can't live with a single server in the deployment when we want inter-host communication for containers when we are deploying and updating software every now and then and when we are scaling as well or we want a better management capabilities or we want auto healing thing if something goes down automatically it should get recreated then the answer is 
Kubernetes. And in case we have logging and monitoring, that time also Kubernetes has better solutions to provide. So let's understand what exactly it is providing. It is providing all the building blocks. It helps us deploy, it helps us manage, it helps us scale the containers as well. And if you are running a container, it helps us edit the container, it helps us updating on the run the containers, it helps us in scheduling as well. I am running an application and it can be scheduled in any of the nodes in my particular region right if i want to be a zone specific deployment i can do that i if i want to be a rack specific deployment a host specific deployment there are advanced scheduling techniques with which i can attain that and monitoring and logging is one of the other best things which we have and then authentication and authorization is very important so it has role based access method for the authorization and because this technology is one of the hottest technologies and Everyone is shifting from the virtual machines to the container world. All the bigger cloud providers have obviously have to provide solutions. And Amazon was the, one of the first beginners to provide that. They came with Amazon EKS. Then Azure came with Azure Kubernetes service. We have Google Compute uh, Kubernetes engine. We have Oracle's container Kubernetes engine. And then we have Digital Ocean's Kubernetes service as well. So these are one of the cloud providers. Everyone is providing that. A lot of people were asking which one is the best Kubernetes cluster, right? Everyone provides the same. You deploy a Kubernetes cluster on on-prem or on cloud. It all doesn't make much difference. If it is on cloud, it is managed service, then the management part goes to the cloud provider. Otherwise, it's all same. If I have to work with it, same command, same setup, same set of things, everything works as it is on every uh, cloud provider or on on-prem. In on-prem or you are doing, or if you are setting up not as a managed service, then the management headache is with you. So here uh, we would be discussing about the architecture on a very higher level. So when we talk about um, a cluster i'm saying there are a lot of machines in the setup and all of them are running containers obviously someone has to monitor them right so think there are a lot of machines over here which are running docker and they can run containers in them so someone like a master node has to sit and uh, dictate on what to do and what not to do right and in that master node also because these guys are preaching containers they run their services also as containers kubernetes processes also run as containers let's see what are the master kubernetes processes api server control manager scheduler and etcd api server receives the request controller manager is for controlling the auto scaling auto healing all that roles is done by them and then the scheduler is there. Scheduler does the scheduling part of it because we are no more on a single host. I create a container and runs on that host. That question is not there. Now the question is where this container would get placed in the cluster. So scheduler is the one which takes the decision. And then we have the HCD, which is the configuration map. We have to back up this guy pretty well so that we have the complete configuration saved with us in case something happens to our cluster you can restore back from your etcd so if you have an admin guy and you are setting up this complete cluster master comes up with these roles and processes and the worker nodes comes with the agent kubelet is the agent with the c advisor it comes up together c advisor helps us in monitoring the resources utilized by the containers which are running on that particular node and then kube proxy is the one which is providing us the ability to reach those containers so here master is the control plane part and we are talking about the data plane part then kube proxy will come into picture now to stitch up the complete networking there is something called as container network interface plugin that will come into play so that all the nodes in the cluster gets connected including the master and if a dev guy or an admin guy talks to the Kubernetes cluster, the request goes to the API server. It picks the latest configuration from etcd. If I'm creating a pod, it will go to the scheduler and request where should I get placed. The response comes back to the API server and the desired, the picked node would get contacted by uh, via the API server. So the kubelet, the agent which is running, that would receive the request. 
and it would contact the docker because kubernetes is a software which can manage and orchestrate containers it doesn't have the ability to spin containers so it will go to the containerization tool like docker and it will spin up containers for now just ignore the word pod we will be going to that in few moments so pod is the container type of thing which gets spinned up and the response goes back and everything gets updated same way if I am having the controller in place so that in case I'm running multiple replicas, it can manage those replicas as well. And if someone tries to reach my application from the outside world, it is coming to the queue proxy and that leads me to the pods inside that or the containers where the applications are running. Till now, I was talking about container, 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 and suddenly Mamta brings a new word called as pod, and people are astonished, what is this pod? You said Kubernetes manages containers, and from where this pod new terminology is coming to the picture, right? So you have a worker node on which you plan to run containers, so you have Docker, and you have the agent running over there, and in case you want to package a container so that Kubernetes understands it, and that is called pod. Pod is like a wrapper, which is wrapping our container. Our application still runs in container, but it is wrapped by a covering called as pod so that Kubernetes can manage it. Because the management at the end of the day has to be done by Kubernetes. That's the reason we do that. So my pod can be a single container or my pod can have multiple containers, a group of containers as well. So pod is the smallest unit. I can bring up a pod with a single container or I can bring up my pod with a group of containers as well. And when we are bringing up them, how containers used to get IP addresses, the IP addresses are tied up to the pod now. And when we are tying up these IP addresses to the pod, containers would be sharing the port namespace or the port network port space inside the pod's IP address. So just imagine giving a very silly example, pod will get an IP address of 1.2.3.4, then container can open a port 80 and listen on 1.2.3.4 colon 80. If I have two containers, one can listen on 80 and one can listen on 81. So when we keep multiple containers inside a pod, when there is real a necessity, someone had posted a question. I hear the terminology of microservices a lot. Yes, when we are talking about microservices, containers comes handy with it because when we are saying it's a microservice, it's a very small application and we can bring very small application in a virtual machine. It will ruin the resource utilization, but we can bring a very small application in a container and that gives us the maximum utilization of the resources. So when we are saying microservices, microservices are running as containers. Just to correlate what exactly is a microservice, suppose everyone does shopping on amazon.com right you have a authentication authorization service you have a product catalog you have say billing you have uh, customer uh, liking things the customer reviews so each is a different service have you ever seen amazon showing for not for very rare case the doggy comes into the picture right but in case it would have been an application which has clubbed everything together if one thing goes wrong the everything stops working so here every application authentication is an independent application which is running in one container authorization is running in one container billing is running in one container you are running a pr product catalog in one container like that you have distributed it's a distributed microservice architecture and they talk to the together and make the complete application in case something is not working you will not realize so life has become easy Applications are always up, but life is much more difficult as well because when they were sitting together, they were talking well and there was no latency and all. Now I'm spreading them across hosts. So network latency and a lot of things comes into picture, right? So microservices, container, Docker, all come together when we are talking about all these technologies and Kubernetes is the one which helps us manage them. Uh, so coming back to this, I said pod gets a dynamic IP address and it's not a static IP address. So if the pod restarts, the IP address changes. So just imagine I have a database running inside a container and my IP addresses changes. My web app can't reach my database. 
and then that's a big trouble, right? So for that case, they bring up a static component called as service. And when we have a pod running a container, it gets an IP address, but it gets a static IP address with a service. Now you will say, Mamta, when container goes for reboot, IP address can be re uh, regenerated or released and recreated, right? Then why service can't lose its IP address? Because service is not a process which is running. Service is just like an entry in the system. We have allocated an IP address. And unless and until you go and delete the service, the IP address will not be lost. So we would reach the database using database service IP, and then we would reach to the containers. So service is providing us the static look over there. So here service provides to solve that connectivity issue, which we have in containers of the dynamic IP address. It provides us a static IP address. It helps us expose our application to the outside world or within the cluster as well. So that's the beauty of services. Well, that was our Kubernetes and Docker expert Mamta talking about architecture of Kubernetes, its component, that's master and worker nodes, and then pods, which are nothing but collection of one or more containers that Kubernetes uses to deploy applications. So now, as I said at the start, if you're interested to attend a approximately 90 minute free training, where we talk about everything related to Docker, what is Docker, their architecture, networking, storage in Docker, and then we look at Kubernetes, what is Kubernetes, how is it different from Docker, and then we'll also talk about the certified Kubernetes administrator. That's one of the high in demand skill and the certification you must do. So register for this free class at ketonacademy.com forward slash Kubernetes 02. Now in the next fourth part of this five part video series, I'll bring Mamta back where she will cover configuring highly available applications using multiple replica worker nodes and how the application running on these pods stay highly available when the containers fail from one node to another node. We'll also talk about the 22 hands-on lab that we recommend in our Kubernetes training that will not only help you in clearing the Kubernetes certification, but it'll also help you in job. So what these 22 lab exercises you must be doing. We'll talk all about this in next episode. So if you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, then go and subscribe at youtube.com forward slash Ketoni Academy so that you get notification when this next video comes out. Well, that's all from me, Atul Kumar from team Ketoni Academy, where we help you in your journey to cloud and cloud native applications running on Docker and Kubernetes. I'll see you next week with highly available Kubernetes application. Till then, take care.